yet another blog from the beautiful four-week national city of Melbourne, down here on the Yarra River, is it called, if I remember my geography correctly. Today we have a video about two concepts, two interlinked concepts that the pickup community gets completely wrong. And a lot of students come to me with this issue, uh, misunderstanding this issue, uh, misapplication of these concepts, and I wanna share the correct concepts with you today. And those concepts are man to a woman and lover versus provider. Okay, so man to woman and lover versus provider, these are two, two terminologies popular, popularized by Owen Cook or uh, RSD Tyler, formerly of Real Social Dynamics, and they have a, a new company name now, Hire Self or something like that. And you know, Owen Cook, uh, RSD Tyler, is, he's a force of nature. One of the best speakers ever, I think in, in all aspects ever, uh, an incredible seller of ideas, an incredible promoter of ideas, a brilliant thinker, brilliant analyst, all those good things. But I, you know, at, when we all worked together as different coaches, we often had semantically different uh, interpretations of certain phenomena. And the man to a woman idea, we'll first start with man to woman, then we'll next go to lover versus provider. The man to a woman idea, I, I don't agree with. I think it's the wrong way of describing something. And, but, but for Tyler to use that as an RSD coach and as a dating coach, and I'm sure maybe he still does, um, the problem with that, especially with an Americanization of that idea, was that students out there would hear this idea, man to a woman, and especially with this like macho male empowerment type of movement, what would happen is guys would, would act super macho, super aggressive, and you know, our, our good friend Julian Blank uh, of, uh, of Transformation Mastery, <clears throat> man to a woman would manifest uh, as guys saying like, Oi, you, come here. Like uh, aggressive tone of voice, cutting the space, getting in the face, angry, angry look on the face, um, asserting dominance, things like that. And that has some value for guys who have absolutely no social experience, guys who are introverted, guys who have never gone out before, to say man to a woman as a man up, take up space, be louder, it's kind of easy to grab a hold of that idea and then work with it and, and, and be a bit assertive and in a way dominant and confident and dashing, whereas you had none of that before. So the problem is man to a woman, it, it is too aggressive in, in this day and age. It's the wrong way to think about it. It's a good starting idea if, you, if you're very unaggressive and you're very unmarcher to begin with, but it's not the right way to think about it. Man to a woman, Okay, the concept is, is really relevant uh, in game in general is because when a lot of you guys are doing pickup and you're starting to speak to girls, you don't at all show that you're interested in talking to the girls and interested in making something happen, as in going on a date, becoming, moving towards intimacy, showing your attraction, because one of the big things, one of the big themes on this channel and in recent weeks is that you guys, when you do speak to girls, if you speak to girls, you're too safe about it. So you don't take any risks, you don't ask anything of the girl, you don't risk rejection, and you need, if you're moving things forward and asking for the phone number or a makeout or get a drink or whatever, you are going to risk rejection, okay? That's the idea, but then it becomes man to woman, then it becomes a pickup or a dating scenario. The other thing is, back in the day with like Tyler and Ross Jeffries and uh, even Mystery, not Tyler so much because he, he sort of totally evolved, but like the Mystery Method way of thinking, it was almost like, it's like low value to, to ask, to, to offer the girl a drink or to give the girl a compliment or to say, hey, I'm interested in you, an indication of interest. Um, which the IOI was always referred to like a girl showing a guy an IOI, but it was almost like considered to be low value or giving your power away if you're giving a girl an IOI, uh, if you're showing that you're interested in her. Now, I want to reinterpret. I want to help you to understand what man to a woman really means because so many guys get this wrong. Now, man, man to woman, it means, you know, you're, you're doing the pickup, you're, you're a confident guy, you're, you know, working your career, you're going to the gym, you're learning self-help as you are from this channel and you, oh, we've got a boat coming in and you, uh, you want to show that you're interested in that girl. So the way that you do that, you, you can simply do it verbally by calling to action and we have a variety of calls to action all of which historically other PUAs would say is low value or giving your power away so man to woman by definition is if you're saying hey 
I like talking to you, I'd like to dance with you later. That's being man to woman. That's when you, you're not just saying, hey, where are you from? What are you doing? It's a nice night. And having a vague, general, and, and indirect conversation, you then insert something into the conversation saying, I am interested in you. Get some engine noise here. I am interested in you, and I'm interested in doing more with you and your friends, and you joining my friends and getting to know you. And that, that's gonna mean asking for the number, asking for the Instagram, asking to offer her a drink, which nowadays, every, all guys buy girls drinks. Everybody does. In the pickup industry, in the non-pickup industry, guys offer that and that's totally fine and normal. You're not giving your, your power away. You're not looking desperate or anything like that. That's annoying. <laughs> we get the, uh, the, motor, the motor noise while we're doing a vlog here. We're just gonna have to power through, right? Man to a woman, man to a boat, right? There you go, man to a boat. That can be the, the, uh, the, the thumbnail. Um, so if you're, if you're talking to the girl, any, any statement that includes the words I and you, that is man to woman. It's showing that this is a pickup, this is on, I want this to be on, I want this to go in the direction of us getting to know each other better both for friendship, intimacy, dating, relationship, whatever you want it to be, it's when you're asking that you want more and you're also talking about the way that she is affecting you. So you can also be man to a woman by saying things like, you make me nervous. I feel I was super nervous to come over here and talk to you. It took me courage to come over here and speak with you. Man to a woman is simply you outlining that this is a pickup, that this is a guy being interested in a girl. And as you can see, if you do this, this is inherently gonna be in the, the edgy zone of the conversation compass, the conversation, it's bloody engine, <laughs> the conversation compass, because if you're saying, hey, I'd like to buy you a drink, then you risk rejection, then you're, you know, you're playing to win, where some of you, so, so many of you guys are in the pattern of pay, playing to not lose. You'll talk to the girl, you get the conversation started, you'll, you'll be funny, you'll be silly, you'll tell stories, you'll give compliments, but then when it comes to saying, hey, let's do something later, or hey, let's go to the after party, or hey, come with me to the dance floor, and you even escalating and going for the make out or something like that, you, you actually don't do it. And that means that the girl doesn't even register you as a guy who's hitting on her. And the girls, the girls actually don't want to complicate their own reality by inviting more guys to hit on them. They do want to be active in the dating game, but they don't want to invite you to hit on them too much because they can do that to every guy and they want to be chosen by a guy who is dashing and empowered and confident. She wants to be chosen by, chosen by a guy with choice. So that means even if the girl is speaking to you, she's gonna almost like be blinded to the idea that you are you know, hitting on her. She's just gonna almost play dumb and block that part out until you actually explicitly bring it up because it makes people nervous, it makes people uncomfortable, and it, it is thrilling, but you gotta control the thrill. You've gotta initiate the man to woman stuff. Like, it's as simple as I wanna go, I wanna go dance with you later. I think you're cooler than all the other girls here. It took so much courage for me to come over here and talk to you. All of these expressions are, I am interested in you in one way or the other, or you are affecting me in one way or the other. And that's when it becomes about you and her, and that's when it becomes a pickup. But that, for so many of you, is a leap of faith, and that is man to woman. So it doesn't have to be you being macho and standing up strong and pointing at the ground and raising your voice and things like that. That is an overcompensation for guys who worry about not being macho uh, and, and not being in touch with their own masculinity. Now, of course, you can play macho. You can play, you can express yourself in macho ways, like flexing your muscles, picking people up, um, doing big hugs, beating your chest, you can play that way, but you don't actually wanna be that way. So you can channel your masculinity in a playful role-playing kind of way, but you don't wanna be the guy who's in the bar with his arms crossed, being tough and aggressive and all those like kind of silly stereotypes, because that, it doesn't work and it's not sustainable and it's not gonna be attractive either. Now, that was the first concept. The second concept is lover versus provider. Another, another issue that I think RSD Tyler, o Owen Cook, um, for the higher self or whatever the company is now, uh, I think that he really got this one wrong. And it, the problem is that it really limits the way that a lot of guys behave and the way that they relate to women. So, <sighs> lover versus provider, the way that Owen spoke about it, if you wanna be the lover, that's the guy who's like dynamic, confident, uh, you know, having one night stands, creating instant attraction, 
and, and getting the girl to like him on the basis of like animal attraction, uh, emotional attraction, whereas the provider is like so many guys out there who are beta males, who have a good job, who go to the gym, who are predictable and reliable, who are not inherently attractive, who are, you know, they, 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 they would make a good husband on paper because they're the provider. They can, you know, provide for you, uh, provide for the girl a, a home and uh, you're not gonna cheat on her and you're like the, the provider guy is lucky to have the girl, whereas the, the girl is not right, really lucky to have the provider guy, okay? So that's the wrong way of looking at it as well, okay? The thing is, it, what that's communicating is that if you become an attractive guy, you have to be the one night stand kind of guy. And it, it almost devalues if you become a really respectable member of society, hard working, going to the gym, uh, you know, sociable, popular, uh, good at creating uh, great conversations with a lot of different people. But if you are the kind of guy who you know, has a, a brilliant job and looks after yourself, that doesn't make you a provider. The right way, the right way to think about this concept is the lover, which is going to be the kind of guy who's maybe covered in tattoos with aggressive hairstyle and uh, really cool clothing, maybe piercings and things like that. Maybe you're a sports star, maybe you're a rock star. The, the lover is the kind of guy who the parents would not like, the friends would be impressed by, and in the girl's tri-brain uh, conflict, she thinks, I would be cool if I got with the lover, the rock star type guy. This guy's so crazy that my heart's never gonna get attached to him, but I can have fun with him and not get emotionally attached. And of course, the sex is the sex. She wants to have uh, fun and intimacy as all the majority of human beings do. It's quite hard to be that kind of guy. You really need to own that life and lifestyle, go to the gym, dress that certain way. Uh, you're almost the, the one night stand kind of guy, and that's fine. You can live that phase of your life. And some girls will go through phases where they like, where they want to be with that kind of guy. So the alternative to that, what you thought of as the provider is actually what we call a very eligible bachelor, okay? A very, very eligible bachelor. And that is ex completely obtainable for everybody out here watching this video. You would, you would listen to the idea that lover versus provider that, okay, shit, I don't wanna be a provider. That's gonna be really bad, I'm gonna be unattractive. Uh, and I'm going to be, you know, a low value and a loser and things like that. But it's not that case. It's not the case at all. You can actually be a very attractive, high value guy who all girls are going to like. But you are the very eligible bachelor. And the trick to that is, you do all the lover type behaviors, but you don't need to have a crazy haircut and and do drugs and uh, get super drunk on the weekend and invest into you know, tattoos and gym and stuff like that. You don't need to be that guy. You can be an upstanding member of society who is really good at making girls feel great. But the thing that makes you a really eligible bachelor is that you are popular in a way that girls worry about losing your attention to somebody else. That's what makes you an extremely eligible bachelor. So imagine, there you are at a bar or a party or something like that out there in your part of the world and you're talking to this girl and she's really enjoying you. You're smooth, charming, you're uh, intelligent, you're well-mannered, you're well-groomed, you respect yourself in the gym, you might not have the perfect body, but you've got a sense of humor, you've got a personality, you can talk, and you know you don't look like Captain America or Thor or Aquaman or something like that. You're just a regular everyday guy who's ahead of the curve and you're making things happen for yourself. And if that girl is sitting there with you, knowing that this guy's got his life together, or at least he's on a trajectory to having his life together, if you're a guy in your 20s and you know, you're, you're studying hard, you're working hard, and you're a bright guy, the girl's gonna think that you're on the right track even if you haven't yet uh, accomplished the life that you want. And if she's worried that you can do that same kind of personality and humor and making other girls feel popular, she's gonna worry about losing you. And that is what makes you a very eligible bachelor, right? That's what makes your game work. And that's completely obtainable and sustain sustainable to, to all the guys watching this kind of video, I think if you're already a lover, you're not gonna wanna watch this kind of video because you're already abundant with chicks. But the big mistake here is that you worry that you are being the provider, which is low value, and you're giving your power away, and girls are using you for the wrong reasons. It's not that case. So in your dating game, your pickup and dating game, you can apply everything that I'm talking about. Uh, all these skills, all this personal development stuff, 
and then you can go out and do Tinder dates and day game and social circle and night game, make a lot of connections, make girls feel good, create a lot of options for yourself because you never know which options will work out and which options won't work out, and go on the date, explore the relationship, get to know these girls, and you know, those girls out there, they might be dating other guys at the same time. They're gonna be evaluating their options, they're gonna be texting multiple guys, they're gonna be thinking about multiple guys, you know, people are allowed to look at their options, you know, we're not beholden to any one person. And if she is worried that you're busy with your career or you might be actually out there meeting other girls, that's when you become devilishly attractive, extremely attractive and extremely eligible bachelor. So what you can do going forward is realize, damn, I am actually an extremely eligible bachelor. Girls like me and girls fear losing me to other girls because I'm creating opportunities, I'm a catch, and I'm really good at creating rapport and, and a bit of humor with these girls. You can have confidence and empowerment that you are actually very attractive, comparable to a lover, because what most girls want in the upper middle class and middle class dating game, which is to, to which this channel goes to, what they want is uh, almost, they want reliability. They want a guy who can be there on the weekend, who can cre create a nice community with your friends and her friends and go to weddings on the weekend and have someone to hang out with on the weekend and watch movies with and cook with. That's generally what people want, okay? To get a bit of action and also have a bit of companionship. That's what we want, right? And you can be really attractive in those confines if you realize that you're a very eligible bachelor, okay? So not lover versus provider. It's like lover and very eligible bachelor. And there are gonna be guys out there who are providers who are just naive to understanding you know, what makes women tick and they would have worked all of their life to make some money to provide a house and these things for a woman, a woman, but he, he may not have his personality and confidence on point and some men like that will be taken advantage of. They're naive to these things, they find a channel like this and then they start empowering their personality. And of course, if you can create opportunities for yourself, if you can create abundance for yourself and you eventually find a great girl who, you, who suits you and she is suited back to you in return, then you're gonna have great relationships and that's what this channel is all about, okay? That's the dating game. So, lover versus provider and demystifying uh, man to a woman. Sorry, I, I, the terminology is so strange and foreign to me that I can't remember it. Anyway, we've enjoyed having a conversation with this boat here today, right? Give it a thumbs up for just enduring. Have you ever made the mistake of being a macho man in the in the in the bar right write that one in the comments let's get the comments cranking give me a thumbs up for dealing with the boat and of course if you've learned something here today this can help your game and of course subscribe if you haven't been here before check out my coaching schedule what i do is one thing and one thing well i do immersive programs that go for five weeks long with a stellar group of up to nine guys in spectacular cities all over the world and what's different about our program is that we do not want repeat customers. We want you to do one program with us and then be ready to go. To have mastered your dating game, by all means, do coaching calls and join our mastermind to keep yourself in touch. But we want you to do one program and that's it. And then you can be part of the community and have your dating game handled. For you to feel like you're a super eligible bachelor and you can do man to woman in the right kind of way. So check out our upcoming cities in the next couple of months. Croatia in June, Croatia in July, Helsinki in September. New York in October, London in December, and then Mexico in January. A few other locations coming up after that. Uh, and I will be thinning out my availability after that because I'm going in a different direction. So life's good. Alex from 4 Week Natural from Melbourne, me and the boat, the noisy boat. See you later.